No, you got it. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Sam Bentley asking yeah, Alexandria. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, guys? It is going awesome. Thank you so much Dude. for doing this. Uh, new album, yeah, no. Where Do We Go From Here, out August 25th. Before we yeah. before we dive in, uh, just how are you, sir? How is life? Life is great. Life is awesome. Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, I'm excited. You know, lots of really cool things coming up. Uh, as you say, new albums coming out. About to hit the road. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. So good. That is awesome. My, my co-host today, by the way, is Lizzie. Hello. Hello, Lizzie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Not we, bad. We were both able to get an advanced listen of the album, which is cool superb. That. And I think that uh, fans are really going to dig it because it kind of covers all of your other past albums in one like one encapturement if you will what what Perfect. do you would you would you agree to that or absolutely i was gonna say exactly that it's uh something i think we've been doing this long enough now where we've got such a discography of different material and different avenues that we've explored that uh we thought it was about time to give the fans something that kind of encapsulated like you say all of it from from the very beginning we've got some heavier heavier numbers and then uh some of the ballads it, there's everything in there, but uh, definitely kept in mind some of the earlier albums and some of the other influences that we had in early on in the career. So, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I love heavy music. So for me, it's like, yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's go, you know. <laughs> when, when you guys were tossing around album title names, why did you end up going with Where Do We Go From Here? I mean, obviously, it's a bold title. And if you could also answer the question, that is the title. Yeah, yeah, that is the title. Um, uh, it's a song that Danny brought to us and um, immediately just like, for one, I mean, you've heard the record. It's quite, it's a really powerful song um, uh, for me. And I think the rest of the guys, is, well, I'll, I'll give you my reason why I thought it was just a no brainer for me when I heard it was just, I feel like everybody can relate to that question. Um, we've been doing this for so long, but our fans have also been with us for so long as well. Um, they've come along this journey with us. We're not kids anymore. You know, we started this when we were, t I was 17, you know, and I'm 32 now. So there's that question that I think everybody at some point asks, that, asks themselves in their life, maybe more than once. Um, you know, whatever it is you're doing, not necessarily if it's, uh, you know, our, if it's a band or if it's a, you know, whether it's you starting a new career or a new family or moving somewhere, like that question always comes up, you know. Um, I think if you've got life planned, um, it's got a funny way of kind of, dealing you some curveballs sometimes so you know it's just definitely a question that everybody can probably relate to in some sense so you know that being said like the song itself was just really powerful for me i you know it, it was a no-brainer really it it, it, it it kind of sparked questions in everyone's minds really and kind of got us all thinking so um yeah we've been doing this a long time and i think that it's not when we say we where do we go from here it's not necessarily just the five of us it's it's, I think anybody that kind of reads that has been with us a long time can probably feel that too. You know, we're a family. We've always called this a family. You know, our fans mean a lot to us. And uh, here we are still doing this and uh, enjoying it and putting music out and people are still loving it. And, you know, we're all one, I think, on at this point, you know. <laughs> and that's new new fans as well, I think, could relate to it too. When I, when so, I was jamming it, there was a, a song that's a little bit shorter than the others that kind of stood out. I think which one you know which one I'm talking about. I think everyone's going to really dig that one. But my question is, has it been revealed who the vocalist on uh, Let Go is, the female vocalist? Um, I mean, I, I'll i tell you. Her name's Grace Grundy. She's a great friend of ours, and it's not the first time we've actually worked with her. Um, she's a... Um, She's a British singer, a great friend of ours, like I said. She was actually on a song called uh, I Don't Need You um, on one of our previous records from like House on Fire. Unfortunately, that song never really saw the light of day as much, or even get, I guess, didn't get like, it, it didn't get the attention it deserved. It just kind of, you know, when you put your singles that come out and then you service all those and you tour and stuff, it kind of sometimes gets swallowed up. And I thought that it was such a beautiful, amazing song. And her voice is so 
it's such a perfect contrast to, um, next to Danny's because he's got this raspy rock, you know, tone and she's just got this angelic, um, ethereal kind of sounding voice. And if you go and check her, check her out, uh, she's an amazing artist. She's called Grace Grundy and she's from England and she does loads of, she's, she's great. She's great. And a really wonderful person too. So we just kind of jumped at the opportunity to get her on a, another track really. And we thought, you know, this is actually going to be a single on the next one. So Hell yeah. um, that one's one of my we favorites for sure. I, yeah, I, I yeah, agree. Same. Single. And I heard that and what she did on it was just like, Hell yeah. Perfect. You nailed it, Grace. <laughs> uh, Lizzie, go ahead and shoot a couple off. Um, first of all, I wanted to start with how has the evolution um, from, you know, the 2010s metalcore era to now where you're more of a hard rock um, kind of level, like what kind of challenges has that presented? Um challenge new challenge I, I don't know really if i could say if there's any we were challenged we were challenged from the get-go <laughs> like you know when we came out the gates i don't think there was we did different things from a lot of people and uh we were different immediately we were just these five british dudes that came over and the inception of our band was a bit a bit different from the rest as well so we've always kind of i don't know if that's just something that we we thrive under pressure or we like to kind of give ourselves a challenge or just kind of explore new territories, whether that's coming to another country or, or pushing the boundaries. Every time we make a record, we don't want to really kind of, we've never made the same record. So it was kind of a natural thing, really. I think just the way that where our heads were at the time. And I think where Danny's was when he was, uh, you know, lyrically and just the style. But like I said before, I've never ever um, strayed away from heavy music myself. I love metalcore. I love, I love metal. I love all kinds of music, but you know, I go to the gym, and that's what's that's what gets me going. You know, and uh, but in that, in our band, we've always had like a we've always been a melting pot. You know, Ben's loved blues, and uh, I've loved my heaviest stuff, but I've also loved classic rock, and I've loved uh, EDM and electronic, and then you've got James and Cam who love the really heavy stuff, and you know, we're just a melting pot, and I think that comes out in um, in our music, and uh, you know, changing genres if that's kind of what you're kind of getting at a little bit, like it's, it, it face, you know, you, you definitely get a stamp on your forehead. As soon as you bring that first album out, that's who you are. You get branded. And it's funny because you never kind of expect that, you know, you're just doing what you love at the time in the moment. And you don't think ahead like, Oh, this is how people are going to, this is what we're going to be now. So you know, when that happens, it's kind of hard to stray away from that. But really you just, we've just always been on this weird path of doing whatever we wanted but that first record came out we were very much labeled the metal core hardcore but you know we i mean we just did we were but we've always been on a bit of an exploration but i love it that's how you keep it fresh and i think that's how you're able to do it for as long as you want by as long as you can because you keep it fresh for yourself and you enjoy it and you're honest and i think your music speaks volumes when you do that so you know well challenges said. challenges uh top of my head i don't know really uh I don't know it's a good question because <laughs> we're always facing challenges we're all we're always facing challenges uh it's just challenges are exciting you know it's i true. like a challenge <laughs> <laughs> Liz, do you have one more or do you want me to jump in um yeah i can go for one more so with this new album what were the most difficult songs to write and what which one was the most fun which one did you enjoy the most more than any other um so we had we we wrote this record in a completely different way like um a lot of the other ones we, well every record's been written in a different way but this one we did it all remotely um so like i was able to record on my base like from like right where i'm sat right now like this is right here is where i kind of got my studio kind of my home studio and we were able to just pass it back and forth but so for me i would probably say um can i ask you a quick uh, question is that something that matt suggested or is that something that you no, guys decided before working with me? It. I think we've just kind of, it just happened that way. You know, we all live in different places now. Like I think on the last few records, we were all living in, uh, in Arizona and, uh, we're no longer living in Arizona anymore. I'm in Nashville. Ben's back in England now. Uh, James is in Texas. Cam just moved here and Danny's in Florida. So it's just like the last record we kind of needed to come together and do it because like together, because it we wrote that and recorded that through COVID. So it was like, almost like musical rehab for us. We needed just to get together and just block all the, can I swear? 
Are we all right? Or do I have to keep her? No, you can you can curse. It's all good. <laughs> I was gonna say we just need to keep all the <laughs> bullshit out out of the studio and just like we needed to just kind of shut everything else out. And uh, but this one was nice because we've all got families too. So I'm at home with my kids and I'm able to be a dad, but I'm also just like able to get stuck into asking stuff while I'm at home too. So for me, it, the whole thing was really fun because this experience was the first time I've been able to do that. Um, and Matt would send lots of th- stuff back to me and then I would send mine back. And, uh, you know, for me personally, if I was to pick a song, I, oh, man, some of them are so like, I don't know. It's like for the bass on this one, there's, it, it kind of goes off. Like there's some really cool grooves in a lot of these songs. Um, I mean, even like Bad Blood, like the verse in Bad Blood's really cool. It's 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 really cool. But like, it, I love how it just hits you in the face straight out of the straight out of the bat. Not to mention, it totally who does. Puts a blast beat in, who puts a blast beat in a chorus? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I love it. I, I do want to expand on on the Matt question. I want to know just how much of a hand he had. Like, because you guys said you did it remotely, so it's kind Massive. of you know. You, you, oh, so Matt, yeah. so Matt took essentially the demos and just kind of and saw the vision and reworked it different ways and said, are you feeling it, not feeling it? And then Ben, obviously he's, he's like the main writer in the band. He always has been. And he, uh, he's got a real close uh, relationship with Matt and those guys are like really good friends. And uh, Ben's, he might as well be in the room with Matt, you know, like it's never just sent off or anything like whether, whether he's actually there, which he's there all the time or he's, or, or they're doing it like this. The way the world is crazy now. Like you can seriously have a session with someone in, the other side of the world you know it's crazy but um yeah he has a huge hand i would cons i would consider matt like an integral part at this point like he's he knows us really well he's a great friend he's a fantastic producer and he's um always pushing it and uh yeah yeah he's great to work with and he he, he knows us real well now and he's always all right anytime we kind of throw a curveball say we want to do this he's like yes let's go and he's up for trying something new you know and Hell not yeah. a lot of people some people like them they, they get a little bit kind of like I don't know. I wouldn't say scared, but just like you feel like you've got to stay in these like lanes, and it's you gotta you gotta step out of those lanes. You gotta have fun. You gotta have fun and and, and experiment a little bit. Totally. Totally. Uh, I have a couple of uh, being that you're a bigger guest for us. I want to know if you have any advice or tips for for smaller bands that want to do what you do that are just starting out. Can you can you recall a mistake or two you guys made, maybe even prior to working with Joey the first time? that you would not recommend a band do or possibly a tour tip or two? You know, I can't say don't do anything because everybody told us not to do a lot of stuff and we did it anyway and it ended up being great for us. So I think (laughs) to piggyback off that, I think believe in yourself and I think that uh, give yourself more credit in a world now that's so opinionated and so so many people can... We see, this is the crazy thing. When we started, when when we were when no one knew who we were, it was MySpace days. So like social media was really just not even a thing yet. So um, we were like one of the, one of the, best, the last bands to like kind of blow up before all. So right now it's probably harder than ever to, to take constructive criticism, let alone trolls and all that. Like, I just think that if I could, and I see it, I see everything. Like I see, I see everything. I see everything like on, you know, on our feed and stuff and I'm reading fans, they're great and stuff. But like, if I could give anyone advice, I think they're just, uh, it's so hard now, but try to stay true to yourself and not let all of the, all of the opinions in because everybody has a platform. You just need to, if you have a feeling and you want to do something, you've got to just kind of give yourself that time to do it and see it through and try not to be so, um, the, the world's a bit of a committee right now. And I think that you really should just trust yourself a little bit and uh, believe in yourself a little bit and let and see it through don't be so uh quick to change at the first negative comment you might read uh, you know really hold true because that's how you start pushing the boundaries and not becoming sounding like everybody else it's, it's fear you know it's feel the fear and do it anyway you know i love that's it. what i would say uh lizzie with the transition from being on Sumerian to signing with Better Noise, what have been some positive and negative aspects of switching labels? Uh, and I don't even know if it's necessarily switching labels because, like, it's such a fast-paced industry. You know, like, everything, you know, it's hard to compare because, like I said before, like, what we were doing 
with Samarian. We had a long, a long stint with Samarian. We did a lot of albums in a time where it's completely different from what it is now when you've got streaming platforms that have come in. So um, without kind of like pointing fingers or anything like that, like I, it's a hard one, that one there. Uh, and it's also a hard time because we signed with Better Noise at a time when the, the music industry completely changed. You know, like we stopped for two years. Mm. Everything stopped. So yeah. based off of that, it's kind of, I would say, unfair to kind of go, oh, they did this and they did this. But like, I think that we wouldn't be where we are right now if it wasn't for Sumerian Records. And honestly, like they were great. They were a great label. I'm not in the I'm not in the business of 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 bad mouthing people and have really have genuinely done a lot of good for us you know like despite any you know relationships have ups and downs and you have kind of like all kinds of things going especially over such a long career but they were great and we just it just got to the point where we 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 had been doing it so long we wanted to kind of just try something new and better noise they welcomed us and have been great and uh we'll see what goes on you know this uh, this album that we've got now is the second one with uh, better noise and uh, we're about to go out on tour and um i'm just really happy to be able to still say i'm doing this and, and uh with my with my boys you know like the same boys i did when when we came over here you know it's, it's that is cool i'm happy i got no negative things to say you know <laughs> really <Awesome>. diplomatic <laughs> <laughs> do you I want to do a couple of serious ones uh do you recall where you were in the phone call when you when you found out that Danny was coming back Danny was coming back um well we were all in Arizona at the time because we were just starting we, we just started writing for the red album the self-titled album and uh it was really easy it was weird it was like we didn't miss a beat when um it wasn't even like a call. It, I guess it was a call. No, it wasn't even a call. It was just like, oh, Danny's in, Danny's going to come by. We've written some music. Danny's Danny's going to come by and, and check it out. It wasn't like a Danny's back. It was just a, you know, things weren't necessarily working out with uh, with with Dennis and stuff at the time. And we just kind of was just sitting a little bit and we were just writing some music and putting our efforts into music and creating because that's how we get through. We got through most things, and um, it just happened that Danny was passing through and he wanted to come and listen to some of the stuff and he loved it and it had been enough time that we hadn't seen each other that it was just like oh you know just hugs and and it was just perfect because it was like we just had that time that we needed but we didn't even realize it like that we needed that time away from each other and when he came back it was just like oh dude you know like so good to see you this is great he got straight in the studio i think into the fire just rolled out and it was just like perfect hell you know? yeah this is great Hell and yeah. it's good. That's the thing, you know. Like, it's not always um, the end. And I think people put so much like they get so like, especially with like you know, no offense or anything, like media and press and stuff like that. It kind of snowballs, and it's a little bit like telephone or what we call in England Chinese whispers. Or it's just like it gets it becomes something so much bigger than it actually needs to be. When really, in actual fact, it's just healthy space. And he came back, and it was just great. It was just a bit of a breather, and he needed it. And we did it too, apparently, because, you know, we're people in the end of the day. We're humans, you know? That's true. <laughs> Sam, I got a, I got kind of a fun one for you. Two-part question. They're both about oh, tour. Man. Do you recall the worst show the band has ever had? Everything went wrong at this show. And second, while on yeah. tour, many times you've gone around the world, where was your favorite place to eat and what did you eat? Okay, cool. I thought this was going to be a lot harder than... I thought it was going to be really hard, though. I've, I've, I've got both of them now. <laughs> I think it's probably obvious to quite a few people. Uh, probably the worst show we ever had was a was in Seattle years ago. Um, I don't know if you saw or heard about it, but Danny got absolutely obliterated blackout drunk to the point where he couldn't even stand up right before we went on. And it was just like a really dark time. Um, we'd been on the road so much, like constantly just fed the party fed the favors fed everything you know again we were branded and made to be this new age motley crew and that crowd and that everything that was around us was just like it was pretty dark times it was fun and crazy but i couldn't i don't think if we did it again we'd be able to survive what we went through in that in those earlier years so it was a point where we were just like you know he was in a dark place and uh just made a bad decision and there was some people around him that that were bad news and didn't, you know, didn't kind of, and he got on stage and he was just in not, he shouldn't have been on stage and it was just a terrible show. Like he couldn't stand up, let alone sing the songs. We're trying to get through the set. 
everyone in the crowd are just like chanting drunk and piece of shit and it was just like to me it was just like a whoa i just remember trying to get him out of the crowd because he just fell into the crowd and it was just a terrible terrible time and it was like a bit of a moment where we all kind of like sit down and go whoa whoa what are we doing you know like pump the brakes for the first time it was like an eye-opening experience where it's just like you know i'm i play bass in the band i couldn't imagine what and i love it it's great but i couldn't imagine being a front man or somebody that's constantly like constantly in the spotlight constantly told this and supposed to be this and supposed to be this like i you know i have a lot of respect for danny and and ben because for all these years i honestly i'm going to tell you right now i don't do interviews ever ever because i just never did really and and i just they were always doing them and it was just kind of just, they just had a lot of, of weight on their shoulders and there was a lot of people just kind of, oh, you're, you're the hardest part in band, blah, blah, do this, do this. And it, that was probably the worst for us. And it was like a bit of a turning point for us where it's like, all right, get your shit together. Are we going to be that those guys or do we want to do, do what we came here to do in the first place? You know, you, you lose your way a little bit. Anyway, on the better one, um, I think mean, going down to South America, like Brazil, like you get like the Brazilian steakhouses and oh, yeah. just... Yeah. The red and the, you know, the red, but the oh, so good. But it's, you know, Argentina, <laughs> it's so good. We, we love, we love to eat. So we love a, a, good, a good steak and uh, the, the food down there is great. So good. So I would probably say Brazil. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you for doing this, by the way, Sam, for uh, yeah. saying that you don't do these very often. We appreciate it. And that's not because I don't want to. It's just I'm riddled with anxiety. Like I, I, I get really bad anxiety and like, especially because I don't, haven't done it for so many years. And I just let like kind of the other guys do it and stuff like, I, and it just, that's just the way it is. Oh, You're, doing right. You're doing great. You're doing great. I'm talking about not, not drinking, you know, I've got a whiskey here, so I'm all right. Cheers. <laughs> Lizzie, go ahead. Go ahead and shoot. Uh, I will say. We'll say. I guess five or six more, if that's okay, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. I'm in a rush. Cool. Awesome. Um, I actually have a question here from one of our viewers. We're live on Twitch right now. Also, um, what is your favorite song that you've ever done to write to perform? Just it, it tops everything else. Um. I. So personally, I think. Uh, a song has two lives. I think it's got a life where you listen to it um, on the record, you know, on your speakers, whether it's in your headphones, in your car, on your monitors, like, and you listen to it that way and you connect with it that way. And then you also listen to it and, and see the song in another life live. It has two lives songs. So for me, it's like, there are some songs that I'll say that are some of my favorites that I've never even played live yet. So it's kind of hard for me to kind of, but I will say, um, You've made it this far off the last record for me was a really power like to me that just pulled i was in a bit of a bad spot personally like family stuff was going on at that time and like when danny wrote those lyrics and i came into this in, i walked into the, the live room and i and i and i, and I listened to it back because the music had all been written and he, he just went in and did the vocals last and we walked in we didn't know what it was going to be about or anything i like broke down in tears it was just like whoa it's such a powerful song for me because it helped me personally at that time i felt like he was it was like I was just put into the shoes of a fan of the band again. And like, well, I felt like without sounding weird, like he was like, Danny was like, wrote the lyrics for me or like was talking to me at that time. So that's like, that sits in a really like personal, like favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. You've made it this far live. Uh, you know, it might even be just be an older one that, that, that I just love. I love, I love run free. I think run free is such a great live song. It's got so many elements that, I think um, are asking, you know, it's got, it's heavy. It's got the, it's got the, a crushing chorus. And then you've got that beautiful, you know, stripped down bridge that just comes back so powerful. Like, and we did a video for them for years ago and we sold out Brixton Academy in London. And um, it'll be something that I'll show my kids when I'm older, because I'm from England and Brixton's a legendary venue. And that song was just, it just was great. So two songs probably and a recent one and a bit of an older one. Yeah. Let the, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm just going off. I'm just talking. No, you should. Oh, cool. We're having a blast. <laughs> uh, regarding, regarding the record coming out August 25th, where do we go from here? Let the dead talk to me has a little bit of Let like a nightmare yeah. before Christmas vibe to me. 
different in it. Did you kind of get that vibe? And and was that was that something that you guys came up with as far as the idea of the feel of it, or was that a, like a, a Matt thing that he kind of suggested? Um, see, this is where I don't want to step out of what because I didn't really have much in that song when it comes to writing. I got it sent to me when it was pretty much in its finality. Like I was like, okay, and it surprised me too. And I was just because it's quite bass driven, you know. In the beginning, it's very just like, oh wow, like they sent it to me like the idea and i was just like okay damn this is different this is cool but then it like you say it kind of breaks down and gets a bit elfman in the in the bridge and it's just like okay this is really cool really yeah. cool um again I, I but like when it comes to like writing that would probably be a matt or a ben question because like i got it sent to me and i probably have a similar response I, I i get what you're saying because i felt the same way i was like this is really cool i didn't ask too many questions because i was like well they're gonna start <laughs> they'll let that one go <laughs> Do, do you guys ever uh do you guys have any like pranks that you do while while on the road just to uh, you know poke fun at each other that you can oh, you can talk we, about in the past we used, to be a bit, we used to be a bit brutal it was more like tour games that we had to follow the rules otherwise you know like buff and buffalo and bison where you've got to drink out of certain hands and stuff but then icing people and back in the day but we always used to take those tour games like way too far way too far and poor james our drummer he <laughs> he would he would always be, or him or Cameron would always be, always be the target because Cameron's just so nice and placid that you can just get away with just going for him. But like James would just pass out. So he's just like, all right, he's going to wake up and his entire body's blue or, you know, <laughs> or, you know, That's like hilarious. James, when he blacks <laughs> out, like that dude, I am not joking, has been, has genuinely fought his way out of hospitals and, 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 and ambulances because people think he's like, on death's door but he's just he just takes a nap mid but to the point where he's like gone and then he'll wake up and just pick one of the beer and go like i've never met anyone who, that can do that but <laughs> italy canada i can literally name times where he's literally straight up ripped stuff out and just booked it out of the out of the hospital or, a, or an ambulance in italy it's crazy but one yeah. of a, one so of a kind a yeah crazy he's he's crazy but hell yeah uh and we've all got kids we're not we're not doing that anymore you know is there we're hanging out there's there's a there's a particular song i don't recall the, off the album where there's almost like a dubstep sound or two for like a second in the background but my question is are there any like hidden tidbits that someone that's doing their first listen from start to finish of it might miss maybe it's something tucked in a mix that you were proud of but, uh, but it's i will in there. say that one of my favorite songs on this record um is uh things could different and it's another heavier one um but in like the bridge it's like a really there's just like a wall of sound and uh i will say that matt and james are really huge fans of the movie dune mm -hmm. dune dune um so that bridge pretty much has like kind of um ins a lot of inspiration from like the score of dune where it's just like Wah! and like you hear like some of the sounds in that bridge and it's like and then watch the movie and listen to some of the score of the movie, you'll be like, okay, cool, I get that. But like, that's because they're such huge fans of the movie. So they, yeah. had, to, they had to throw it in there. And I, I, I was just watching it the other day, not for the first time, but I, I was watching it, I was thinking, damn, okay, I get it. It clicks, <laughs> you know? it clicks. It clicked, it clicked for <laughs> sure. And it's sick and I can't wait to play it live because it's going to just sound massive, you know. Yeah. It's good to listen on your speakers, but like when you get it on a PA, like, let's go. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Lizzie, we'll do final questions. All right, final question. It's album release day, which is coming very soon, so congratulations. Thank you. Um, you're having just a huge party to celebrate the release of this album. Where is this party? What kind of food are you going to have? Are we talking and... strictly like I'm making this up right now? Like, better, it... better noise is paying for the whole thing. So they're flying you wherever you want, and they're the <laughs> caterings, they're doing it all. <laughs> right. Cool. Um, sorry, let me cut you off. Go ahead. Oh no, you're good. Um, like, I was just yeah. gonna add, if you could have, let's say, your three favorite bands play at this party, who would they be? Three. Three. You only get three. <laughs> uh, that's hard that's hard i'm a huge muse fan i'm a huge Ooh. muse fan. muse would be great would be super cool um <sighs> ram well do we get the production too or is it just like stripped down for the party or do we get the full show 
<laughs> Get the production. Ramstein as well, because I just want to see that show, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we'll have Ramstein do a do a huge full production uh, show for just a, for our party. That'd be great. Yeah, uh, there's two. Yeah. Um, oh man, mm. oh, I'm maybe maybe like I don't know. Just like let's do something really fun. Like maybe just get no effects in there or something, and get and have like a punk. Just, we'll just do like an after after hours like wind down, but like wind down with some. With, with, you know, we'll get a bit crazy with no effects, maybe or like Pennywise or something like that. <laughs> cool. I love punk and stuff. I grew up on all that. My brother's like got me into music. He was a punk drummer, so yeah, let's do, let's throw it back with some some punk. We'll do some some huge acts and we'll we'll tie it up with no effects or Pennywise. But yeah, food. I just said let's do a Brazilian cookout. Let's do the let's do the steakhouse. Let's do that. That's when they're like slicing it off the, the yeah. Thing, you get right? a card and you and you even if it's red, they'll come over and go hmm hmm, and you're like ah oh, okay cool. I'm full, but yes, give me more. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Sam. The last question: uh, when when it's it's not music day and you just have time to just reflect on life and just do whatever you want. What what makes you happy? My family, my, my 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 lady Anna and my kids Warren and Callum. Like I just get to be at home with them and be a dad and uh, watch them gr- watch my kids grow. You know, I've got a three year old and a one year old right now. So that to me is like I'm a new dad. You know, so like I'm blown away every single day by them. So like that's how I wind down. That's uh, also how they wind me up too. Um, but you know, I'm learning all that. But honestly, feel so lucky and. Uh, and happy at home right now. So probably would say that for sure. My kids. My Great family. answer. Great answer. Definitely. Where do we go from here? Out August 25th. Me and Lizzie have heard it. It's superb. It's going to blow you guys away. Please, please check it out. Buy it. Buy some merch. Go see them on tour. Mr. Sam <laughs> Bentley of Asking Alexander. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you, guys. Thank I appreciate you. guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. Have yourself a see great you. day, sir. Thank you again. Give me a hell Bye. yeah. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band, Smokeout.